Welcome back everyone for today's technical. For those of you who are new to the channel, I try and put out two videos a week, a technical like this on a Tuesday where we cover a subject related to veterinary medicine in some detail. And then on the weekend, I put out a vlog, which is more of the day-to-day -day as a farm vet. If any of that sounds appealing, go ahead, hit subscribe, ring the little bell, like the video and leave me a comment. Today, we are talking about a subject that's really common in suckler cows. It's hypomagnesia, that is a magnesium deficiency, also commonly known as grass tetany or staggers. Although cases typically peak in the late spring or summer in the UK, in some years we do see a second peak in the autumn. So first, a quick introduction to magnesium in suckler cows. It's an important element for a whole host of functions, including neurological function and muscular contraction. Now, cattle cannot store magnesium, so they need a steady daily supply. For suckler cows, peak demand is usually around four to eight weeks post calving. If those magnesium demands aren't met, then initially you'll see mild signs, things like dry matter intake falling. If the deficiency progresses, you'll start to see neurological signs such as paddling, seizures, hyperexcitability, and eventually, if untreated, death. Unfortunately, one of the most common presentations of a cow with staggers or magnesium deficiency is simply a dead cow, a cow that has died suddenly with signs that she's been paddling around her before she's died. Staggers is one of the few true emergencies in farm animal medicine, and it's one of the reasons whenever you have a down cow, that is time to call the vet without delay. Typically, the time of peak demand around or just after calving also correlates with a drop in supply. Lush, fast-growing grass is not only low in magnesium, but being high sugar and low fiber, it moves very quickly through the animal. That quick movement means the animal's gut has less time to absorb the little magnesium that is there. So in some ways, it's a double whammy. To add insult to injury, magnesium is also very important for regulating calcium, so there are implications for milk fever as well. As I said, if you suspect you have a case, get on the phone to your vet without delay. First of all, how do you know you need to do anything at a herd level? Well, if you've had a clinical case, often that is the tip of the iceberg, and for every clinically affected animal, you will have several others that are just rumbling underneath the surface, aren't doing so bad, but it will just take some trigger, calving, peak lactation, a bad spell of weather, to drive them into a clinical case. To confirm or deny a magnesium issue, just contact your vet. They can take some very simple samples, often run them in-house, and quickly give you an answer. So, what can we do about it? There are several steps we can take to significantly reduce the risk of these cases happening. And those steps fall into two broad categories. The first is improving absorption, and the second is increasing supply. So starting with absorption, the first step you can take is to offer supplementary salt. The sodium in salt is really important for helping cattle absorb magnesium from the rumen, their main stomach compartment. The second is providing sources of long fiber. That typically is hay or straw. That long fiber slows the movement of forage through the cow. That slowing down gives the gut more time to absorb the magnesium that is there. The next is being really careful in how you use nitrogen and potassium fertilizers. There's a couple of reasons for this. Fertilizers tend to make grass grow quicker, but nitrogen and potassium both block the uptake of magnesium by the plant, the grass, and in the cow. So it comes down to a bit of a balancing act, allocating different classes of stock to appropriately fertilized fields. Finally, for absorption, we are carefully choosing the fields we graze and with what stock. As discussed, suckler cows with calves at foot are typically at higher risk. Fast growing new lays, reseeded fields, are going to be higher risk typically. On the other hand, clover, that wonder plant we discussed in a recent technical, contains much more magnesium than grass, so that will work in favor. Likewise, pastures with lots of clover in them typically require less fertilizer. Again, 
that helps the magnesium case. Then we can move on to increasing supply and the most obvious way you can do that is simply to offer magnesium supplementation. As ever, there are several different options for this. Free access mineral buckets, boluses, compound feeds, in water flakes, and even pasture dressing. Which one is gonna work best for you and your herd? That is a conversation to have with your vet. Most importantly, the source of magnesium has got to be palatable, and that can be an issue with in-water flakes if they are used at an inappropriately high level. Finally, try and manage any factors which might reduce dry matter intake, anything that's gonna reduce the intake of magnesium. Those factors could include access to feed, feed palatability, bad weather, rough handling, all of these things can trigger cases of staggers. So that's a really quick rundown of magnesium deficiency in cattle and a few strategies to deal with it. As usual, there's a bit more information in the video description. Any specific questions about your herd, always go to your vet. Otherwise, click subscribe, ring the bell, like the video and leave me a comment. Any feedback's always really welcome.